Hey folks, this is Rose from In Rose's Garden, and today we're going to work on a necklace using our bargain bead box, Midnight Skies. Now it's a little bit intricate, so this is probably going to take a little while, so um, if we need to, we'll split this into two videos, but I'm hoping we can do it in just one. So let's turn down and we'll get started with this. So anyway, what I have here is my dark blue lapis a soft flex beading wire. This will be for when we start the stringing portion of it, which is not yet, as well as some silver crimp tubes, again, for when we start the beading part. All of these beads are going to also be for the beaded part, so we can set those aside for right now. These are for the pendant we're going to make, though, first of all, I'm going to wire wrap. That's why we have the 24 gauge German style wire out. This is also for the pendant. It's a five inch piece of 20 gauge. We're going to set that aside right now, for right now. These are going to be up at the top of our pendant, so we won't need those until we have the wire wrapping done. So we'll drop our pendant out here and our little um, labradorite beads. And let's get those labradorite beads cut loose from the string. And in this dish. I don't think I need these strings in the dish. Now I'm not sure how many of those we're going to need, but what we're going to do is wire wrap it around the outside of our moon here. like so. So we're just going to, like I say, wrap those around. So let's just get some wire out and we'll get that started. So we need quite a bit of wire. So I'm going to cut, probably take out, oh, about two feet. Maybe, maybe just a little more. So, we'll put this aside for right now. Now, the first thing we got to do is decide where we're going to start our uh, wrap at. Because we do need two or three wraps prior to the start of putting in our bead. I'm thinking right here along the edge of our other stone here. So I'll 
push that in as far as we can. We'll go three wraps here. And on the third wrap here, we're going to put in our first bead. Well, if I can find the hole, there we go. So we'll put on our first bead and we'll set it right up on top there. We can see we need to go to the back. So bring our wire through, tighten it up there. Then we'll put in another wrap. And now we have to make our decision. Do we sit on two or do we sit on three? I think we'll sit on two, which is where I usually sit. My wire's catching up on catching on some of my tools over here. So we need to go through. Come on, baby, go through. I'm going to want three be three of the beads here, so definitely want this third one right here. Into we go right here. Down and around. Now, normally I'd put another wire right here. And we still could as long as we push these over a little bit to give us the room for it. And then we'll just put that extra wire in here. Doesn't want to bend, so we will feed it through. I don't really like feeding a long piece like this if I can help it because it's going to try and kink on me. It's inevitable. So when I'm doing a long piece, I put my finger in as I pull it around and that gives it a little more stability. So there's our first three. Now we're gonna go through here where our bell is at right here for um, at least one maybe maybe two we'll see so feed her through it depends on how we think um, it's going to lie with its, um, with the bell in there. I'm not going to put a bead in here, of course, but I do want to have, um, the wire. My wire's catching on some of my tools I have sitting here for the next step. See it's bent right there. We need to get that through and then try and work that bend out a little bit because that is now a weak spot in our wire. So I think I am going to go through the bell one more time or the bell slot here. Now, 
now see where that bend was? It's trying to bend some more. So we're going to discourage that. Want that over there. Then we want to go up through the, the moon again because now we need to do um, one or two wire wraps right here before we put our per first, um, our next one of our labradorites in. So here we go. And of course we still have that weak, weak spot there so we have to be careful because if we're not, we will break the wire there. Another thing about when it gets a kink in it like that, sometimes what will happen is that not only have you weakened this spot there, but it's become relatively sharp. And when you rub your fingers over it, you have um, taken the chance of cutting yourself. So you need to be careful with that. Now this piece is going to be a little bit tricky because it's right here at the point. And I just bent it, so we have to see if we can reverse that out of there as much as possible. There we go. Now under normal circumstances, when I put this second wire here, it would be um, to put the next bead on. But I don't think we're going to have enough room to put another bead there. Well, let's see. If it doesn't work, we will turn. We'll take it back off, and so we can get ro re roll it down to the bottom. like it there but it's gonna I'm not sure it's going to stay there when I bring my wire around see it wants to lift because it doesn't can't go over that so we'll take it back off and we'll see if we can get it to stay down here I need to get the base wire down there. So up and through. This is the only spot I'm not really liking our wraps because there is that issue of um, that point not being able to, not accepting really a wire, a wire wrap on it. So... It wants to come way down here already. I don't really want it there. So let's see if we can get it to stay right here by doing a little weirdo wrap here. Let's see how that works.
It'll do. Now we'll just keep going around here until we get to the other point and then we'll probably have to play little tricks like we did on the other one and that's fine and we're going to wrap it twice here as we go down but we're going to come up on the other side of this um, of the center stone here going to come up over here so that I'm going to just pull it across there and now we're into this other hole we'll do it too like we normally do and then get our next little labradorite bead so. see how that's looking so far Here's that tricky spot again on the point. Now this one's behaving just a touch different than the other one. We'll see how it works here. This one, I think I'm going to do a try and do it like this so that our wire comes over here, and that's all right. Okay, it's not all the way up to the point, but it's not bad. I wish I could get it up to the point, but. We've got room for one more here. Come on, little hole, where are you? There we go. Okay, now what we are going to do is we have to do our ending here. Do three wraps to do the end. Pull them up tight. And see if we can spread the beads around a little bit so they don't look like we have a gap hole here. 
because this would definitely look better with another bead in here. wonder if we could get another bead in there and then just bring it over to the other side. Let's pull this out. Put a bead on. There. See if we can't bring her over here. We can do that. end where we started. And once we've got it ended, just need to clip our wires. This is long enough that I can probably do something else with it. So we'll set it aside and cut the other. And now we need to take our pliers and tuck those extra wires down in so that you don't worry about them crunching anything. Okay, there is our finished wire wrapped piece here. Let's get these a little closer if we can so that it hides that a little bit where it came on there. And there is this piece finished. So we've got that all wire wrapped. I wish I could have done better with the points, but they're all right. Now the next step, we don't need this anymore. We need this piece of wire here, is we're going to finish our pendant by I painted this piece. Um, it's some regular paint. Let me see if I can. I have the, these paint markers. These are Staw. The green one you can see because it doesn't have a sticker on it. If I can find it easily enough. Which it doesn't look like I am going to be able to find it easier. But uh, yeah, this is the Staw Metallic Color Pins, in case you want to use it. That's the blue and the underside of the green. And then after that, I, I touched it up with some Prima paints. Prima paints have a little glitter uh, shine to them, more of a shine. So I liked that better. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take this. We're going to bring a... Bring it up with a couple of pieces of the chips to um, make the pendant. So let's cut the chips wire. Well, we are going to have to put another hole in this piece to hold on to the um, pendant portion of it. But first we're going to just get um, this piece done here. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do, 
is because this has already got a bell piece on it and I want I'm going to use that bell piece I'm going to take my flat nose pliers and I'm going to bend both sides That'll be where this sits down inside here. Then we'll take our regular pliers and just put them in here and bend this over this way and do the same with the other side. And as you see, that's going to form a nice little triangle up there. I'm going to bring our triangle down even a little further. Don't go wiggling around too much on me. And now that I have that basket like in the middle, I'm going to take this one where it's about where it comes together there and bend it up like so. Now we're going to feed our bale through this little basket here. Like so. So now that we've got that done, we'll take hold of right here, where the two come together, and wrap a few wraps right here. So in other words, I've just made an elaborate wire lap wrapped loop. So we'll cut the excess off right here. And then we will trim this and um, tuck this wire in. So the next step is to choose just a couple of chips, just two. And we're going to drop the chip down onto there, like so. And then the last step, and the next step, what we need to do is punch another hole into this piece. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take our ruler and we're going to see how big from hole to hole. And it looks like if we go from the outer to there, it's three quarters of an inch. So we need it to be down at three eighths down for the um, hole that we want to put in the bottom. So right there. So let's take a Sharpie. You know, like a little mark at that spot. Then we want to take our hole punch. I'm not sure if this one will work. It will depend. I can't remember if they said this was pewter or steel. If it's pewter, it will work. If it's steel, it will need to have a different way. Well, I think this must be steel because it is just really fighting going through. So we'll put these up and we'll get out our pin twist one, which is like this. And what we'll do is we'll open this littler one up and stick our piece into here. Trying to get it lined up on that black.
Oops. Come on, you don't fight me. Okay, hard to see in here, but I think we're pretty close. So then you just tighten this down. As you can see, a little piece just came out. That is where the hole is at. And it looks like we did pretty good. Might be a teeny touch off center, but not enough to be a problem. So what we want to do now is to make a loop here to hold on to here, this pendant piece. So, since we need it to go this direction, the loop, we will bend forward like so. Then I'm going to take my stepped bell making pliers. And normally I'd go to the smaller one, but because we're going to have a big gap there, I'm going to the next size up go up and around and because I want it to go slip onto here I'm going to give it a slightly bigger gap and now because we have a front we want this to, and a back we want this to slide on backwards it's because when it slides around to go into here come on baby let's slide around It's going to turn around to the front and that feels like that might not even be big enough it doesn't want to roll around at all so I'm going to intentionally push it out some that gives us a little more wiggle And if I don't get as much wiggle as I want, I will take it off entirely and use a slightly bigger um, hole or loop. And I think it's going to be good enough. So I'll take hold of this, just like you would normally right there, and wrap this up two or three times. Oop, don't want to do that. Trim the excess off and tuck. So, like I say, that doesn't have as much swing as I would have liked. Um, I probably should have made a slightly bigger loop, but it swings all right. 
So there is our pendant all finished. So there we are. This is the, where our pendant we finished to go on our necklace. I'm not sure how I feel about the wire wrapping, but we'll leave it be. Um, but it's still in a very interesting piece. So this has been Rose from In Rose's Garden, and this is the first half of our making of the Labrador Dyke Necklace. For, with Midnight Skies from Bargain Bee Box. Um, our next one will be part two, where we put on the necklace arms. We'll see you later.